Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Checkup. Before we get to the topic at hand, which is COVID-19, we have to address the protests currently going on and the murder of George Floyd at the hands of police. I wholeheartedly, with every ounce of my being, denounce and condemn racism of any kind, especially to those of the black community at the hands of police. Racism isn't just a human rights issue. It's also a health issue. Your zip code says more about how long you live and the quality of life you live more than your cholesterol score. And that's a huge problem in our nation and it needs to be addressed. Know that I stand in firm support, in solidarity with those who are protesting these racial injustices. In fact, I heard a really great speech the other day by Killer Mike and I'm gonna be linking it to my end card. Check it out for sure at the end of this video. Speaking of video, I once again have to point out that I'm disappointed in our nation's media. At a time where we need unity, they're sowing seeds of divisiveness. They're only highlighting the protests when they get violent. They're not showing the countless individuals that are out there that are protecting themselves by socially distancing, wearing masks, being responsible, and being peaceful. There are plenty of these examples, but they are far and fewer between on our media channels. And that's a problem. We need to be able to trust the media to tell us the truth so that we can make better decisions for ourselves and our families. To sum up my message, Black Lives Matter. And speaking of Black Lives Mattering, something that has given me concern, worry about Black Lives is the fact that so many Black communities are out there protesting because they have to. At a time of a pandemic, where they're not only putting their lives on the line because of police injustice, but also because of this virus. And COVID-19 has already dramatically and drastically affected communities of color disproportionately in comparison to other communities. So I worry and I hope that the masks, the social distancing measures, the hand washing is gonna be enough to protect these communities. If you choose to go out and protest, please do your best to do it safely. And if you have someone living with you that's a potentially a high-risk COVID-19 patient, someone who's over the age of 60, has an immunocompromised state, or has several other medical conditions, do your best to limit your interaction with that person to keep them safe as well. Let's continue this conversation about COVID-19 because people are still getting sick with it, and at the same time, we need to begin the reopening of America because the harms of staying closed are starting to creep up and the benefits are starting to get limited. Plus, I'm sure we all wanna get outdoors as the weather improves, but we have to do the going outside and reopening of America strategically and smartly so we don't have another outbreak. So we don't have this giant second wave where thousands die and the hospital system potentially breaks. Those are things we do not want. So I thought during this video, I can answer some of your most common questions about COVID-19 this summer. What about pools? My quick answer to that is you could absolutely get COVID-19 while being at a pool. What you can't have happen is to get COVID-19 from the actual pool water. That is if it's properly maintained. If the pool has proper chlorine levels, bromine levels, the CDC has stated that there cannot be transmission of COVID-19 from the actual pool water. But that doesn't mean if Bobby or Sally is right in front of you and they're coughing and sneezing the virus all over you that you can't get sick. You still can. So all those other rules still apply. Covering your face when you're out of the water, washing your hands frequently, especially after you touch ladders, doorknobs, and all the other public surfaces. And finally, keeping six feet away from others in or out of the water. What about the beach? Everyone wants to go to the beach. And I think the first thing you have to do is check local and state restrictions. Every beach has different rules, and that's because different areas are in different stages of this pandemic. Certain areas have already seen their peak and are dropping down. Other areas are hitting all-time highs, so those two beaches will have different rules and different implications. The one thing that works for everybody is six feet away from others, no matter if you're swimming or on land, making sure your face is covered when you're out of the water. Please don't get your masks wet, because if you do, they become useless and they actually cause other problems. And actually, a good recommendation here would be potentially to bring two masks with your two face coverings. And finally, remembering to wash your hands frequently. As a side note, don't forget your SPF. I actually received a lot of questions from my patients about whether or not the sun will actually kill the virus on the beach. And 
There is some sliver of truth to this, meaning that the virus does live a shorter period outdoors where the sun's UV rays are there, but it's not a natural disinfectant to the degree where if someone sneezes, it automatically gets killed. It's not that strong. It's just a shorter lifespan, not a complete elimination. What about vacations? Well, first things first, if you or someone in your family member that's gonna be traveling is considered high risk over the age of 60, have an immunocompromised state, have several medical conditions. I think travel is an unnecessary risk at this time. That being said, you can have high risk travel and low risk travel. And to me, if I'm gonna make a recommendation to you as a doctor, I'm gonna recommend low risk travel. Try going camping in a remote area. Rent a home instead of staying in a hotel. If you're gonna stay in a hotel, stay on the first floor so you don't need to be in an elevator with a group of people or maybe potentially take the stairs if you are in a hotel on a higher floor. Remember, the biggest risks to your health is exposure to lots of people for a significant period of time. If you can lower the amount of people you're running into and spend less time with them, you're gonna decrease the risk that you're facing with COVID-19. At the same time, if you're otherwise healthy and you're following all protocols, covering your face, washing your hands, keeping six feet away from others when applicable, and you get sick with COVID-19, 90 to 95% of people will be okay. I don't want you to worry about this where it's gonna cause you anxiety. Remember my motto from the beginning of this pandemic, stay alert, not anxious. What about restaurants? If you see your local restaurants beginning to open up, do not be afraid to call ahead or once you get there to ask them what they're going to be doing to keep you and your family safe. If they're not comfortable answering that question, feel free to move on and go to another establishment. Just like restaurants are required to answer your questions about food allergies, they should be comfortable discussing COVID-19 safety practices. What about salons? Well, again, everyone decides what risk is okay for them, but I will say if you're going for a hair color versus a haircut, I would consider the hair color a riskier procedure not because of its inherent nature of what they're doing, but simply because it takes a longer period of time, so you're increasing your exposure to potentially sick individuals. We don't know who's sick. Remember, there's a lot of people walking around who look just fine, have no symptoms, and could potentially be spreading this virus. What about theme parks? Well, all the regular rules, six feet, masks, hand sanitizer, all of that still applies, but a piece of advice for theme parks is to avoid crowded areas. If there's a long line somewhere, if there's a big group of people, try and stay away from that area. Those are the areas where the virus spreads quickly. Remember that COVID-19 spreads two to three times more rapidly than influenza. The last question and probably the most important questions that folks have been asking me is, where will America stand at the end of summer? And I think the answer of that question relies heavily on you and me. There's really a level of personal responsibility here. If we open America strategically and smartly and continue monitoring our hospital systems and follow all the guidelines that we've been talking about, six foot rule, wearing masks, washing our hands frequently, we can be in a really good place this summer to prepare for the fall flu season. But if we don't, and we do everything haphazardly, we could potentially see another spike that can cost us thousands of lives unnecessarily. FYI, I'm gonna be donating all of the AdSense revenue and matching it to the Southern Poverty Law Center. So share this video with your friends and family as these COVID-19 tips can potentially save someone's life. And definitely check out this educational, moving, motivational speech by Killer Mike right here. Click it. And as always, stay happy and healthy.